<laughs> easier to network. And in the dark days of, you know, before any of this happened, a friend of mine sent a letter to all of us living in Boston saying he was moving to Atlanta. Could we join him at a bar here in Boston? And we were going to, our assignment was to bring the names and phone numbers, this is pre-email day, of our friends in Atlanta that he could call when he got there. And then he, when he got down there, he called these people and said, meet me at such and such a bar. You know Diane and you know Susan. And he hosted a networking thing down there. It was brilliant. He, so he, he built his network from everybody here in Boston of who our friends were in Atlanta. So, you know, in many cases, let, you know, technology, and, and this is what I call the hybrid networking. You use the tech, you know, you use the online and you use the face-to-face. -face. When the whole online stuff came up, there was a couple of experts in the whole online stuff, and he was going on and on about how face-to-face -face was going away. And I said, tell me why you like, I did my tell me why you like, um, you know, online. He says, well, it's where I met my wife. And I said, well, how many wives do you need? <laughs> One, and two, did you ever see each other face to face before you got married, or did you just make this decision online? <laughs> you know, so in many cases, none of this is going to, one's not going to replace the other, but you want to have them work well with each other. And if you're smart online, and you're personable online, and you're professional online, you will be um, in a face-to-face -face situation. Yes? Well, part of it is, you know, how big is your blast? You know, you're going to want to maybe want to go back to this. If your blast is, you know, 5,000 people, you might want to revisit, <laughs> you know, who you're including. I'm not saying everybody shouldn't be included, but in some cases you might be over-including. You want this to be manageable. I would say if it's more than 200 people, you really, you know, that's, that's about the max. You're going to want to be able to manage. You just can't manage it. I mean, from a time perspective, you know, this stuff takes time. I mean, I have something called the weather report, which is whether or not you're going to go to a networking event. <laughs> you know, why did I come this morning? I'm speaking. <laughs> you know, why am I going to go to the event tonight? I'm hosting it. You know, I'm hosting it. For those of you who are in town from, from the Midwest, I, I, tonight I'm hosting a meetup for ex-Midwesterners. And so we're going to be a really friendly bunch. <laughs> um, and so many Midwesterners have said to me, you know, it's so tough to network here. Can we host something? And so, I mean, that's what I'm, I'll be doing tonight. This afternoon, I'm speaking for job hunters. So, you know, but each of these things, I had to decide whether or not I'm going to go. Um, and what's my, what's my stake in the situation? But you might want to kind of think about it. I would say probably it's going to be more along the lines of an inner circle, about 50 people who you're going to want to have that you're going to be, you know, significantly in touch with every three to four months and let them know about, you know, one, your project and what you're, where you're going to be and what you're going to be doing, maybe a touch point in between and then a touch point at the end of your six-month rotation and let people know and, you know, and what are some things that you, you're looking to do. Yeah, good question. Any other questions? I've got one or two more things to share with you, and then we're about done. All right. I need one or two volunteers for my last little exercise. I promise it's not going to hurt, but you do need to come up here. All right. Come on up. Come on up. You want to come up? So just a quick etiquette thing. Very nicely put the jacket on. <laughs> You know, just quick little things like this are just going to really make, make a big difference. So we're going to line up here, and we're going to lean forward as far as we possibly can, and you all have to help figure out why we're not falling flat on our face. What's keeping us from falling flat on our face? Our fear, back, what else? Reflex. Reflex. Camera. <laughs> okay, we got a lot of room. Everybody stand up. Spread around. So lean forward, think about this. <laughs> Someone who likes to do push-ups. Let's keep, what, what was the last thing that you felt before you fall over? Toes, all right, you're the winner, toes. Give them a round of applause. All right, what's the moral of this exercise? How big are your toes compared to the rest of your body? Small, it's tiny things like putting on your jacket. Sending a follow-up note, not saying thank you for making time for us, <laughs> that are going to help you succeed in this program. Thank you so much for letting me be your speaker. Thank you.
there's about a minute or two left if there's questions or, yes. The, the greeting in Thailand is called the Wa, and it's this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what's interesting is in many foreign countries, you don't, you don't touch. You know, you bow or you, you know, you Wa or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When in Thailand do their greeting, when here do yours. And, and that's just kind of, there's a book um, called Kiss, Shake, Bow. Um, and there's lots of websites that talk about etiquette. Um, the, when, the run thing, is there anybody here from Japan? So in Japan, when you hand out your business card, um, and I have, I have your diplomas for you, actually. Um, when you hand out your business card, you take it with two corners. The other person takes it with two corners, and you, you bow. If you're traveling to Japan, you should have your, um, Jap your stuff in Japanese on the back side and give them the Japanese side. Oh, so, yeah. so my networking kit is I have my notebook, a pen, my business cards, something extremely important, breath mints. <laughs> and one of the best things about having breath mints is you can give them to other people. Because when people see you have breath mints, they all want one. <laughs> and you can meet a whole lot of people with that. A Sharpie marker. And one of the things that I have is I have an extremely high-tech way I keep track of my business cards. It's called a Ziploc bag. <laughs> and so what I do at the end of an event is all the cards go into the Ziploc bag. And then I'm sitting in front of something brilliant like two and a half men. <laughs> and I type in the information. And then I start getting into my follow-up A, B, or C. But that's my assistant. It all goes into a Ziploc bag. Then I put it into the database. I keep more cards than I probably should, but it's, I'm much more of a visual. I'm actually a kinesthetic learner. I don't know if you're going to be going through this at all in the program, but there's three ways you learn, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is experiential. And so I, I, I like to kind of keep my hands on things and, and ex, you know, experience it. That's why I wanted to have you all try out the handshake and try out, you know, the poor person who's trying to, you know, keep me from kissing them. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, it's one thing to watch. It's another thing to do. You know, it's another thing to say. If you, if you watch a video on YouTube on how to do a stick shift, hey, it looks easy <laughs> until you get in there and you start doing it. And it's not quite so pretty. So those are a couple things. I have one in my car. I have one in the office. I have, you know, I just, I have two or three of them.